Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss what is perceptron learning and how perceptron learning works in artificial neural network. The first neural model, also known as a perceptron, is designed in 1958. Perceptron is a linear binary classifier used for supervised learning. Linear means uh, perceptron learning can be used for uh, classifying a data which is linearly separable. That is nothing but if a data is uh, separable with a straight line, we can use a perceptron network. Also, uh, if the data is uh, uh, having only two classes, that is nothing but uh, if the target is having uh, two classes, then we can use perceptron learning. If you have more than two classes, we cannot go with the perceptron learning in this case. Perceptron learning model is a combination of two concepts. The first one is uh, mclock pitts model of an artificial neuron uh, and uh, Hebbian learning for adjusting the weights here. So in this case, we need to adjust the weights so that we can classify all the examples correctly. Uh, the Hebbian learning concept is used for adjusting the weights in this case. Perceptron learning consists of uh, four uh, components. The first component is input from uh, other neurons. You can see here x1, x2, x3 and xn are the inputs. They are coming from other neurons. For each and every neuron, uh, there is an associated weight here. That is nothing but w1, w2, w3 till wn. And uh, there is an associated bias here. So those are the two things. Uh, the third one is uh, whenever we have input, I and weights here we compute something known as uh, the uh, net sum here that is nothing but uh, uh, the um, multiplication of uh, uh, the input and weight and then we will take the sum of those things x1 w1 plus x2 w2 plus x3 w3 and so on and once you calculate this uh, net sum uh, what we do is on the top of this net sum we apply something called as activation function based on the activation function we will get the different up output here Let's assume that the activation function is a step function. There are uh, multiple number of activation functions are there. Just for explaining, I'm considering the step activation function here. In step activation function, uh, if the calculated sum, this one, if it is greater than or equivalent to some threshold value, the output will be one here. If it is less than some threshold value, it will be equivalent to zero here. So based on the activation function, we will get different outputs here. Now, once you calculate the output, we will compare this output against the actual output. And then uh, we will calculate the error and uh, once you calculate the error, uh, we will uh, check whether the error is acceptable or not. If it is not acceptable, we will update the weights in this case. So we'll try to understand the perceptron learning algorithm uh, step by step here. Uh, first, we need to initialize all these weights here. For each and every input, as said earlier, there will be weights and the bias here. So we need to initialize these uh, weights as well as the bias randomly. Uh, usually in the range of minus 0.5 to plus 0.5 here. Now uh, for each epoch, until we will be able to classify each and every example correctly, we need to perform the following steps here. So in the first step, we need to compute the weighted sum. As said earlier, we need to compute this uh, weighted sum here. Once you compute the weighted sum uh, uh, using the input and uh, the weights, uh, we need to apply the activation function. As said earlier, we need to apply the activation function so that we can calculate the output here. So first we will calculate the uh, weighted sum here. On the top of that, we will apply the activation function. Again, just for explanation purpose, I have taken step activation function here. Now, once you calculate this output, uh, we need to calculate the error by subtracting the estimated output. Estimated means uh, the calculated output from the desired output that is nothing but the target output here. So we have some target. So uh, the calculated output will be subtracted from this uh, target output so that you will be able to calculate the error here. So once you calculate this error, uh, uh, if uh, we are happy with this error, there is no need to do the weight updation. If we are not happy with this error, we need to go back and update these particular weights. That is what uh, you can see here. We have calculated the output. We will calculate the error. If the error is uh, acceptable, we don't update these particular weights. If error is not acceptable, we will go back and update these weights in this case. Now the question is uh, how to update these uh, weights in this case. If you want to update the weights, uh, we need to use this equation. First, we need to calculate the change in uh, weight here, that is delta wi, which is equivalent to uh, the learning rate. This is the learning rate multiplied by uh, the calculated uh, error here, multiplied by the input. That is nothing but if you want to modify this particular w1, what is that we need to do? Delta w1 is equivalent to learning rate. This learning rate is common for everything. The calculated error that is again common for everything xi xi is nothing but what x1 we need to consider in this case 
if you want to modify this w2 we need to consider x2 and so on now once you calculate this delta wi or delta w1 we can modify the weight something like this wi is equal to wi that's a volt weight plus change in weight in this case so with the help of this one we will be able to get the new weight in this case so in this video i have discussed what is perceptron learning and how can we use perceptron learning for training the model in this case in the next video i will discuss a numerical example on perceptron learning the link for that video i will put in the description below i hope the concept of perceptron learning is clear if you like the video do like and share with your friends press the subscribe button for more videos press the bell icon for regular updates thank you for watching